morning everyone happy Wednesday I think it's Wednesday <laughs> anyways uh, we're gonna talk about sleep apnea and the reason that came up is because I just got back from the sleep doctor and I, I went to one several years ago and they said that I had narcolepsy and I was medicated for several years and I decided to go off of them because I hate medicine several years ago anyways so before I had surgery, I was trying to build a lot of muscle and lose weight because I knew that I was going to be down and out for, I thought it was going to be a month, but here we are over seven months later. So I remember going to the doctor and telling her, you know, what I'm doing isn't working and the statistics and calculations doesn't add up, you know, so she did a bunch of tests and a pulse ox. And my pulse ox, um, I actually wore it for two nights because I didn't think that the first night I got a very good reading. So I did it again. And when I took the pulse ox back, the people at the company told me, yeah, you're going to need a sleep machine. She, she said, you stop breathing a lot. So I knew it was coming, but um, I haven't really been going to the doctor or any of my doctors like I should be because it's really difficult to get out and get to the doctor and, you know, schedule around uh, everyone else's schedule. So I finally went today and, you know, they do the questionnaire of narcolepsy. You know, do you fall asleep here? Do you fall asleep there? Yes. Well, a lot of them, who doesn't fall asleep? One of the questions was, um, after your lunch, if you're sitting quietly, who doesn't, right? But I mean, some of them, you know, the, I was definitely positive and they're not normal. Like, um, falling asleep reading and watching TV and things like that. I'm just used to it, so for me it's not a really big deal. But, I guess it is to them. So, he went over my pulse ox that I had done a couple months ago. And, he said, um, that pulse ox, why did you get it? And then I told him. And he said, oh, oh, yeah, that makes sense, you know, about the weight loss and stuff. And then he said, do you know how many times you stopped breathing? And I said, well, they said it was quite a few. And he said, yeah, quite a few. <laughs> so then he, you know, did, did the exam. And, of course, I had, I don't have it on right now, but I had my Marfan hoodie on. So that drew his attention. He said, you know, do you have Marfan syndrome? And I said, yeah. And he gave me, the, at first, the, the look that everybody always gives me. You know, like, are you sure? Like, yes, I have the long face, but I'm only five, well, it's five, six now. I've actually shrank since I had the kyphoscoliosis. So, I'm not typical Marfan height, but for my family, I am taller than everyone. Well, everyone but one person. So, you know, that, I, I always get questioned on, and because I'm not skinny, never have been. So, he said, okay, well, let me see your hands. Well, those are Marf hands. <laughs> um, he told me a story about his dad had long fingers, and he played the violin well because they were long and skinny. I've never played an instrument, so I really cannot testify to that, but he thought it was super interesting. And he explained to me that I don't, my palate isn't extremely high, you know, because of our fans, we have a high palate. Mine's a little high, but it's not um, severe by any means. So the part that is, is a problem with the sleep apnea is your uvula, you know, the little hangy down thing, and your tongue is supposed to be like here. And mine's like here. So basically what's happening with me is he, he explained it almost like I'm choking on my tongue. Hi Beth, how are you? Um, so I've never heard anybody explain it like that, but it actually made very good sense. Now not everybody chokes on their tongue. <laughs> uh, you know, it's supposed to be like this, so not everybody does that. But he said, you know, that's that's probably the the Marfans there which 
pretty much everything on my list. Some things aren't, but most of them are because of Marfan's and tissue disorders. So, that one though, because I didn't have the really high palette, kind of surprised me that he attributed that to Marfan's, even though sleep apnea is extremely common with not just Marfan's, but connective tissue disorders in general. So, I before that pulse ox, I didn't think that I had it. I just thought that I had like chronic fatigue or, um, you know, one of the other things that cause you to be tired all the time. So I sleep probably at least 10 hours a night. If I get eight hours like the normal person, I am grumpy as I'll get out. I usually have a headache. Um, I'm just, I'm not very pleasant to be around and I don't feel good at all. So, and sorry if my voice is a little scratchy. I think I'm getting the crud. Anyways, so I do all this sleeping and then I get up and I'm still sleepy. No matter how many, if it was two hours or 12 hours. And I do sleep 12 hours quite frequently actually. And I'm still sleepy. And then if I can manage to get myself out of bed and, you know, obviously there's exceptions when I have a migraine and things like that, I'm going to be in bed all day, whether I'm tired or not, because I have a migraine. So if I can get myself out of bed, <clears throat> excuse me, within a couple hours, I'm ready for a nap. And then generally the urge to nap is extremely overwhelming and I just can't keep my eyes open. So not every day, but I would say most days I take some type of nap be it an hour or four hours and then I'm back in bed again by <clears throat> excuse me about 10 o'clock so that's not normal right <laughs> um I asked him because I tried my mom's CPAP machine the CPAP is the thing that gives you oxygen into your nose uh, when you have sleep apnea so that you have this continuous airflow and hopefully you don't stop breathing like you do if you if you're untreated so I was asking um, you know I wore my mom's and my ears just hurt after and I didn't even wear them for very long um, now she did have a different mask you know it just went here and some of them go here so that may have made a difference too but I told him I said you know if that's gonna make my ears hurt like that I, I can't do that every night he explained it by her pressure was probably too high so I have an appointment next week to go and sleep <laughs> and they have this you know they have beds and you know funny funny thing is I had to ask how comfortable their beds were because my hip isn't even used to my bed still and it's been how long so she took me into the different rooms and, <laughs> and we sat on them <laughs> to see if I was even going to be able to do it now or if I was going to have to postpone it she found one and put in a request and all that so I'll be going next week but he said with my with my asthma you know it's kind of a vicious cycle because asthma makes sleep apnea worse but sleep apnea also makes asthma worse well I, I am one pro air for um, as needed like when you get an asthma attack but they, they had me one a couple different daily ones and those you know, they're just, they're just not very good. I won't go into it. Um, thrush, if you know what that is, that's definitely um, a big symptom. Hang on here. About the mouth appliance. The mouth appliance, do you mean um, like a bite guard? Mouth guard, because I have one of those. I grind my teeth, so I do have one of those, if that's what you're talking about. <clears throat> so anyways, he also was talking about sleep apnea being uh, very bad for acid reflux, which I have and I'm on medicine for. So I said, do you mean that if I get this machine that I can go off of my protonics? He said, well, you know, I'm not a gastro doctor, but yeah, there's a high likelihood that you could get rid of that that's enough for me to go sleep and let them watch me because who doesn't want to get rid of a medicine when I have an entire pill box 
bowls medicine. Yeah, I want to get rid of one or all of them. <laughs> so I'd be able to get rid of, well, hopefully get rid of the acid reflux medicine and the daily inhaler. He also said that, at, <coughs> excuse me, sleep apnea affects your memory and concentration. And that is definitely, I'm definitely affected by that. It didn't help that I was on Neurontin for um, like six months, a couple years ago. Now I know that there's people on here and we've had debates about it before that the effect, the helpfulness is worth the risk for that. But, you know, that's another story. For me, it wasn't. So I just attributed my memory loss to that. And apparently that's not the only thing that's going on which is actually very reassuring because all summers runs in our families, you know, so when you start losing your memory and can't remember anything, it's the first thing you think of. So, you know, that, that was, that was good. You know, you give me the sleep machine and I can get that back. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I don't think, I don't really know a whole, whole lot about sleep apnea, but I do know that our fans are affected by it. And, you know, our tissues are loose so maybe not just the uvula and the tongue like I have but you know there's other things that can close your your um, breathing hole so we are affected I don't know about narcolepsy I don't think so but I could be wrong um, asthma we're affected by that too you know and like I said it's a vicious cycle so if we can get that taken care of now, do I want to sleep in a mask and have to buy purified water and have this big thing on my nightstand? And no, I don't. But if it can help all these other things, why not try it? And he said, you know, mom's pressure was too high in hers. That's probably why my ears hurt. But if it still hurt when it was adjusted to me, there were some other things that we could try. I don't, he didn't tell me what they were. But that's good to know you know so I was super super impressed with this doctor because like I said most people look at me and they're like oh, okay you have Marfans especially here in West Virginia because you know I've had people say well you don't look like Abraham Lincoln thank you I'm glad <laughs> you know people have said well uh, you know it's mainly for men no it's not uh, you're not tall enough well you don't have to be tall. You're not skinny enough. Well, you don't have to be skinny. Um, your fingers aren't long enough. Well, again, those are pretty long. I've seen longer and I've seen skinnier with other morphs, but for the general public, those are pretty long, right? So, mainly my stuff is internal. You know, I have the heart stuff and the lenses and joint issues and things like that. So, I was very pleasantly surprised that he was that interested in it and he knew what it was and he knew that sleep apnea was connected because that just doesn't happen around here and that's a really big part of awareness you know if he wasn't that clued in I would have to like I always do every time I go to any doctor be my own advocate and explain to him it is connected and it is a higher chance that we have that and the asthma and things like that and usually the doctors just look at me like oh well I'm the doctor so you're wrong thankfully he didn't do that so you know that leads into advocacy when we're posting all of this because I know there's a lot of us that are you know on it this month now that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be on it all the time but we're trying to get as much information out there as possible so that people don't look at you and say you're you don't have that you're too you're too short it doesn't matter right it's called a syndrome because it affects everybody differently yes be your own advocate <laughs> yes exactly nobody's going to do it for you i mean you know even even like my mom your mom always wants to uh you know be your advocate per se but nobody can do it like you. You know what's going on in your body. You know your pain level. You know your vision. And like I talked in a, in a previous one about eyes, 
you know, subjective versus objective. You know, you can look at me and think my back doesn't hurt because I'm not bent over and holding my back and things like that, but it does. And you really cannot look at me and tell me that because that's a subjective thing, right? Same thing with your eyes. But what I'm trying to emphasize, we have to teach people. Sadly, we have to teach doctors. We have to teach hospitals, nurses, because I know I'm in West Virginia and, and we definitely are behind the curve on a lot of education, but there's really no excuse for that. So everywhere I go, I always take, at the very least, my emergency card, right? And even like when I go to the pool for my PT, they have, they have all seen this and know what to do. So I take all my information, my not just my medicines and surgeries like you would just a normal person would. I take everything. You know, what, do you, what can I teach you? Because that's, that's my job. You know, your health care is your job. And we have a much tougher job and a much more uh, hard, I guess, job than a lot of people. Because it is rare and we do have so much that is, is going on. So we have to keep, you know, we have to stay on it, you know. So, sleep apnea, you know, that, that's the title of this. Are you tired when you wake up? Do you feel like you got sleep? Are you having issues losing weight? Does your, does your throat hurt when you wake up? Um, I mean, there's a lot of symptoms of it, right? But it's something worth looking into if you're continuously waking up and you're still tired and things like that. So... I don't know if there's any other sleep disorders that are connected with Marfan's or not. If any of you know, you could definitely um, chime in. But beware of sleep apnea because it is dangerous. You know, you stop breathing. I mean, I don't, I don't know if any of you have asthma or not, but when you have an asthma attack, it's scary, especially when it wakes you up. So if you're stop breathing and waking up at night that's scary so 